Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Bob Haas, and with me here is none other, none other than Team 19043, Stylus from Romania. They have had an absolutely standout season in center stage. They are fourth by OPR, second by auto OPR, first by Tele OPR, won the Maryland Tech Invitational, and were finalists at Romania Nationals. There is just so much going on with this robot, blazingly fast intake, excellent outtake. I think every team has a lot to learn from Silas coming up on First Updates Now. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com slash robots. All right, guys. So my first question for you guys is the Romania season is very long. You know, Nationals is in March. It gives you a lot of time to work on your robot. And we've seen a lot of different strategies from teams uh, as far as like rebuilds go. We're keeping the same robot. What was your approach to that this season? Great. So with the new format we got this year, we thought that the strategy for us was pretty straightforward. We had like two or four months to go to the league meet uh, part of our season. So until February, we all had to that take part in three competitions that were pretty low level. So we started with a very simple robot that could do all the main scoring tasks pretty efficiently, that could also uh, test our strategies with it. And after the part, which by the way, we won all of, all of our limits with the strategy we had from the start, uh, we started to build this robot. So like a, right after this, uh, February 2nd league meet, we got to a lab and disassembled everything and started working on this one because it was off being cadded since December. And we built it for the league championship. We had pretty good success. We were the second seed, if I'm not mistaken, at the uh, league championship and were semi final. And then uh, for nationals, we just did a lot more diver practice. We performed pretty well, got, got to the finals. And then for MTI, we did some upgrades, which were mainly on our outtake and the intake that was working a lot it was our main problem and we got it work really well we are really proud of how it turned out and it helped us win by yeah of course and you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a lot so usually in behind the bots we don't focus too much on the drivetrain but i think you guys have done an exceptional job with yours this season so why don't we take a look at it from the underside talk me through some of the important decisions you've made and uh, after that we'll talk about your time. During the designing of this robot, we took into consideration everything and how we want to build everything into it. And we tried to make it as compact as possible. The first thing I wanted to achieve is a low center of mass. As you can see, you can see seven or six motors just as the, at the base of the robot. We also have our automatic pods and everything else and the battery in the middle. This is really important for our robot not to tip because we had some problems with our, 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 our old robots. So right now we don't really have any problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, wow, that's, it's just like, you know, jam-packed full uh, with everything on the robot. And as far as assembly goes, did you have any issues or tips for teams uh, when they're trying to design drivetrains as compact as this? Oh, I definitely have something to say. You really have to consider screws and have a, a selection of screws. Because mm -hmm. our robot wouldn't be possible without countersunk screws in some parts. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's very important to take into account. Um, yeah, another really Oh, sorry. Yeah, and um, you know, another thing I've seen like recently with teams is they like doing a lot of like belly pans and it seems like you guys didn't want to do like a, a full width or full area belly pin. Uh, what was the decision behind that? We just didn't think it's necessary. We have our left hand low enough so we don't ride on pixels and our wires are really protected so we don't have issues on that side. Yeah, and you know, talking about the wires, I can see some really interesting like bundling or cabling going on there. Can you just elaborate a little more on that? Okay, so we are very proud of our cables. Uh, it's rather pretty neatly behind the uh, underside the robot. This is a bit sketchy, but something that we did and we didn't see any other team do is twist and make our own cables to bend. So this blue cable you see here, if you want to look at it, is actually just from a 100 mil long uh, thing of cable that is individual, and we take it and we twist it up and hit it so that it retains its shape. And it gets us really neat wires that uh, we have at the correct size every time and we can also make a lot of spares and have them just be 
they need and cost them for yeah that, that's fantastic and you know while we're there also are you using the standoffs as uh end stops for your slides uh, i can see those and how has that been working out for you yeah that's something that i've actually done on the first robot and it works really well and i didn't see a reason not to, to do it again but mm -hmm. it's pretty was able to put a slide really low to be able to press under the stage awesome door. Yeah, and you know, so moving on, I think one thing that's really not talked about enough is your guys' climb. You guys have a very clever climb mechanism, so why don't you describe it and I'll ask questions after. Uh, the climbing mechanism is integrated into the drivetrain, that's really important. We are using our, uh, all of our four motors from the drivetrain, and we have a PTO mechanism that, uh, that, that has an open center linkage with a servo that uh, connects a gear to the uh, motors that also have gears. Those making contact with the over central linkage do not get disconnected and we can climb during the end game. It's really yeah. reliable. And you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have the actuation like up on the screen uh, with, with the footage. It's just really, really incredible seeing this. And so, you know, obviously you guys are very accomplished as designers. What was the decision behind going for a very complex mechanism like this versus something much more simple that we've seen from a lot of other teams? Our main reason was that we don't have any motors left to do the climb on. So our first thought was to go to the and it was a crazy idea, but we actually made it and it worked. Awesome, That's yeah. It. And like looking back, do you think you could have done like a servo-based climb instead or was PTO really the right decision? Uh, I think we are using, right now we are using four servers for us the climbing mechanism, which is not optimal, but we honestly enjoyed a lot. The, we enjoyed the challenge of designing a video on the climb mechanism this way. So we don't regret going with it. The only thing we would have wanted to do and we didn't think about it uh, in a timely manner was moving our video to connect to the uh, slide axle so that we can power down, uh, power the slide using the outing motors down and have uh, an outing line. Mm, I see. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So now going into your intake, you know, you guys mentioned that this is what you've iterated on most this season. It was really, really top notch at MTI. I mean, just very consistent, very high performing. Why don't you guys talk me through uh, the beginning of your intake, you know, right where it interacts with the pixels. And then we can talk about the slides and the housing and everything else. After. We have a regular intake, like like most teams, we have a drop down and a controller that to intake the pixels. We just have a 1150 RPM motor with the drop down. I think the most important part of the intake is the controller and uh, with the new update for MTI, having a direct direct path for pixels to enter the intake deposit. I think that's the most important part because it removes 90% of gems and makes the intake much more reliable for autonomous because that's what we wanted to do and we have a 2 plus 7 pretty consistently. Yeah, and, yeah, and so talking about the counter roller, definitely lots of interesting things going on there. Uh, first, I want to talk about your belt run. Like, I think I see you guys using the inverted belts and then I want to talk about the counter rollers themselves. So is the inverted belt strategy the only thing you've ran this season and it's worked the whole time or did you try other things also? I, I thought of doing other things, but this is just the easiest uh, thing to do with you just have a belt that you can make custom size or just weld it together with it and then put it in an axe and it just was connected awesome. directly or yeah anywhere and now talking about your counter rollers uh definitely haven't seen uh like those exact ones before with other teams so did you guys make them yourself or what was the process like hey the counter rollers are cast by us in a silicon mode mold and a tree printed with a tray printed color the mold is also pre-printed and we just I uh, used two parts silicone, cast it up, put it into the mold with the forty, and after like half a day, we take it out and it's just a counter. We also have some spare things. Very cool, very cool. Now, talking a little bit about once the pixels are in the outtake, uh, how they're housed and stuff, can you walk me through uh, that that process or like what sensors you have or any small features you think that really improve the consistency? Our deposit is really complex. To make it reliable and make the transfer reliable, First of all, we, have a, we had an important issue that was pixel alignment in the deposit. As you can see, pixels could stay anywhere in the deposit, but we made these spring-loaded linear mechanisms with uh, bearings that make sure that pixels stay in one of the two spots we want. So right now we can just have two pixels or one pixel and not one pixel, not worry about it. We also have some really small one-way latches to make sure pixels don't exit the deposit during autonomy or 3 
and spring loaded lenses to make sure we can transfer the pixels without using extra servos. Yeah, no, that, that's just really incredible. And I think I see some wires going around there also. So what sensors are you using uh, for the pixels? Okay. Those are some be be uh, breaking sensors in the deposit, one for each uh, pixel in the deposit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Here, and and so like as far as uh, using the sensors themselves, when you get that sensor information that you have pixels in the robot, what do you do with that in in Teleop? Okay, in Teleop, we just send a vibration to the controllers of, of both drivers, so we can drag the uh, wing pretty much blindly and no one will leave. This mm -hmm. helps us a lot at robots taking from the from the stack just in front of the, our wing. Yeah, yeah that, that makes a ton of sense. Now, talking about uh, the slides, I, I see a lot of fishes on, on one side and then the string on the other. So are you running string only on one side? If so, what was the reasoning behind that? We actually found before MTI from Roto D2 that they tried to string only one side and it's much faster. So we just got that and it, it really works much faster. As you can see, we have two springs right here because the retraction would pull so hard it would stretch any spring we use so we just doubled up and it works. I see. Makes makes sense. And so, like, uh, have you? Do you have any like worries about like if the string breaks, you don't have a backup string, or that's not a concern to you guys? It's actually much easier to change the string if it's only on one side. It takes mm -hmm. me around five. I practice it a lot. As I see. To one hour. I see. That that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. So now, once the pixels come inside your robot, your intake is fully retracted. What happens next? Okay, so that when the intake goes into the, the robot, it's met by uh, the outtake, which is made up of uh, the whole outtake, of course, but there are two retractable grabbers here. Uh, I don't know if this is the And they're flush with this plate uh, for, uh, for the grabbers. So mm -hmm. when the big goes in, it just opens up inside of it, and we manage to just uh, bring it up by going over this. Uh, Flat that are strung down, and this is how we transfer. There's basically no transfer time, there's no movement needed for having the pixels go inside the grabbers themselves. We just have to break the extent of in and of open the grabbers. That's uh, the main thing that made us go with this robot choice instead of sticking with a uh, direct pass through one with a uh, bucket because we didn't have one to have an efficient transfer that way. If we weren't using the extendo, we could just transfer immediately. Yeah, and yeah, and, you know, that's just really, really efficient. I think some of the top teams we've seen this year have, you know, pretty much near instant transfers and you guys have pulled that off. Uh, very well. So now one, one question I have for you guys, looking around your general robot structure, you have pocketed every single plate uh, pretty much that there is. Uh, for pocketing, would you recommend teams use like the strut thickness or strategy that you guys have? Or do you think you can go a little lighter or a little heavier um, with, with the pocketing? I think what we use is pretty optimal. It's seven or eight millimeters depending on the part, if it's drive templates or plates that are more important. We, I don't think going any thinner is good because right now I can just pull the drivetrain, it would bend a little bit. Okay, and okay. It, yeah, got it. Yeah, that, that's super helpful advice for teams looking into, uh, you know, getting into pocketing their drivetrains and other structures. Now, back to the outtake. I, as you were pulling it uh, up and out, there's just so many different degrees of freedom. So let's focus right on uh, near where the pixels are. Uh, you said you should, talked about the grabbers. What other degrees of freedom do you have uh, there? Okay, I'm gonna start from uh, the outermost part. So mm -hmm. first of all, we have a uh, pivoting gear of freedom for uh, that we added for SKI only to allow us to make mosaics more optimally. Before, uh, we didn't have this for nationals, and everyone knew us in the team that didn't make any mosaics. So <laughs> we don't, it's just that uh, we added this, and now we feel like we're pretty good with mosaics of the art, mosaic of the art. I'm pretty sure it's 15 at the moment. But I mean, your still... Teleop OPR is first in the world, so, you know, no complaints. So, yeah, we're very happy with uh, our mosaics now because of this upgrade and some of the others, but this one mainly helped us a lot with this. So, mm -hmm. this shouldn't be over by the game, it's very important. After that, what we thought, what we think is the biggest upgrade to our cycle time is the mini turret we have. So, this turret is adjusted uh, automatically through software so that it always points to the backdrop uh, regardless of the orientation of the road on the field. This allows us to just touch the pixels on the backdrop. Once we touch them on the backdrop, we know they're going to stay there if we release them. 
So this allows us to cycle very fast. We can dump white pixels on the board with ideal cycle times down five seconds, I think. And mm -hmm. that's very good. Yeah, and so, you know, we, we've seen a lot of other teams that have these uh, adjustment mechanisms to align the pixels to the board. And a lot of the time they'll use like passive mechanisms like springs. Uh, but for you guys, I pretty much just see the servo and it's rigidly mounted to the servo. Did you have any um, issues with, with this setup being so rigid or do you have compliance elsewhere that accounts for this? Okay, I'm, I'm, we are a big fan of having stuff rigid and not influence any other compliance in the robot. You can see that pretty much everything is rigid and this allows us to be really confident when playing on the board. It, if we dump, we know that we're, we're not going to hit the board too hard or too little. And if we want to play some we know that the outtake is going to be exactly there. So we try to have as, as little turn as possible. So this is really, really we were planning initially to go with compliance systems, but after we saw how well the mirror it works in this rigid form, we were really happy with it. So we never changed and we also changed our opinion. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. Now, so now after the mini turret, what degrees of freedom do you have? I think I see the linear slide going in and out. Let's talk about that a little. So there's two stages of MGNs. One's uh, an MGN 9 the other mod one and, the, and an MGN 7 on the inner on the inner one and then there is this mechanical, mechanical link, link degree of freedom that is really interesting so just extending the innermost set of rails also pitches, uh, pitches the outtake upwards so that it's parallel to the board this is done through the use of a z-time chain and a pivot, a pivot here that is sprung this way mm -hmm. so that when it has a hard stop here for, for it to be parallel, but when it stands, it's pulled by the display chain back. There's also a hard stop here, and it's all in parallel to the board. Wow, and have you had any like consistency issues with that, or really was it you designed the whole kinematics in CAD, and you mapped it all out, and once you built it, everything was good? The only problem we have with this is calibrating the hard stops, and this was done through a lot of iterating using polycarbonate parts. We got this and this part in which like 0.3 millimeter increments, like 10 different dimensions. <laughs> this, 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 until we got the perfect one, then cut it out of metal. Very nice, very nice, yeah. And now, uh, you know, talking about your deposit slides as well, uh, if you if you think there's anything like very special that you want to mention for teams, go ahead. But, you know, we've seen a lot of slides this year. So we also only spring one side of, of these mm -hmm. so that we under spring the other side. We have this elastic cord that is the most extended when it's down. It's a uh, front in cascade and it's tied here again and here on the end effector. And this helps us only use one motor for the, for the slides, allowing us to use two, two motors for the uh, extendo. This was an upgrade for MPI and it allowed us to have a way more fast of all other ones because the biggest limiting factor was how slow the extendo was tracking for nationals. Mm -hmm. And now we have the plus seven just because we are allowed to retry the intake many times because we don't have to squeeze in to us, my little time barrier with the extending. Yeah, I mean, Silas, you guys have just had an absolutely fantastic season. Now, the center stage season has pretty much come to a close. Looking back on it, are there any other changes you'd want to make to this robot? Or really, are you pretty happy with how everything turned out? So, I think we are pretty happy with our robot right now. I don't think it would be worth to change anything and only make things more consistent. Maybe the intake is a improvement but overall we are very happy awesome yeah thank you guys so much i mean it was really just a pleasure seeing you guys play at the highest level at mti take home the win just absolutely outstanding performance overall i can't wait to see what you guys come up with next season until then i'm abhas reporting for first updates now and this is team 19043 silas from romania thank you this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com robots.